Hi, this is Tyler, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make 304 billion different websites step by step with no step skip. Everyone, even huge companies like Wix, Squarespace, and Weebly, have the website creation process wrong. But I finally figured out how to do it right. I finally figured out how to get people to actually complete their website. See, the old way of creating a website was to either start off with a blank page, which is terrifying. You just have this blank screen in front of you and you don't know what to do or what to say. And that is awful and almost no one finishes it. I visit hundreds of people's websites. It's like 2%. It's crazy. The second way is to import an entire page or an entire website. But then you have all of these pieces of content that don't go with your website and it's all mishmash and you have to delete things. And once you delete things, then it just doesn't get finished because it's not right. So that's a terrible way of also doing your website. And that's what all these big businesses are doing. Plus, if you do import a website that already has all of the content in it and you do change it and it even does look nice, well, you have the same website as another 100,000 people, so it's not very customized. So how do you get that customized flexibility and speed? Well, it's not starting off with a blank page and it's not importing an entire website. I have figured out what to do and I think it's perfect. It starts off with only using the best. We're using the best platform in the world, which is WordPress to create our website. We're using the best page builder to build our pages, which is Elementor, and we're using the best free theme, which is Ocean WP. Then the magical part, we went to the best websites in the world. We went to Airbnb, Nike, Disney, Apple, Uber, and we saw all the best sections, not the entire website, just the best sections. And we took those sections and we copied them and we redesigned them and we made them perfect so that you can import them into your website. So you're going to have the best sections of the best companies in the entire world. You can import it in just one second. Just click import and you have the best design in the entire world right there in a second on your website. So far we have designed 200 different sections, beautiful sections. And all you have to do is click and import them and they're there in a second. If you put five sections on each page, that will give you 304,278,4800 different websites. So you never have to worry about your website looking like everyone else's, but you also never have to look at a blank screen and be terrified. You have the best designs at your fingertips in an instant. And this is all step by step. So if you just do the same things I do, if you click where I click and do what I do, then you'll have your own website at the end of this video. A nine-year-old emailed me the other day showing me his website. It was amazing. And of course, everything works on mobile phone, tablet, PC, Mac, whatever you want. Even though this video is for absolute beginners and you don't need to know a thing, it can also be used by professional web designers. You guys are probably using WordPress anyways, and imagine having something to show a client in a day instead of a month. And that's exactly what's happening. A few weeks ago, I got an email from N. Manuel, and he emailed me and told me that he lives in Florida and he was working as a Sprint store manager and he saw one of my videos and it inspired him to become a web developer. He was just thanking me for my videos. And I was just so blown away that someone could watch something on YouTube and start their own business. And it, it just, it inspires me so much. And so what we did is we collaborated on this video. He's designed a whole bunch of the sections. So if you need any help, he's there to help you. Of course, you could do it on your own. It's easy, step-by-step, -step, no coding, anything like that. But he's just there to help you if you need it. His website is icreateyoursite.com. He's amazing. So to build your website, you can use a Mac or a PC or anything else. All the software and everything is all online. And again, we're gonna be using WordPress, which is the most popular way to make a website in the entire world. It's used by people like Forbes, CNN, Katy Perry, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Sweden's official website, Microsoft, Usain Bolt, Disney, Snoop Dogg, Mercedes-Benz, UPS, Best Buy, The Rolling Stones, etc. 
All right, so let's get started with a plan of what we're going to do. So our plan is right here. It's easy. It's in four steps. We're going to get our domain name, get hosting, install WordPress, and create our website. A domain name is the same thing as your website name. So my domain name is tyler.com. Facebook's domain name is facebook.com. Google's domain name is google.com. Without a domain name, there's no place for people to go to see your website. So you definitely need a domain name. It's definitely required in order to have a website. A domain name costs about $13 per year. The next thing that we need to get is hosting. Hosting is a computer that's on 24 hours a day that holds all of your website information. So it holds all of your content, it holds all of your images, it holds all of your text, it holds your logo. Everything that you see on a website is a computer that's on 24 hours a day that's holding all of your information. And that's what hosting is. So if you only had a domain name, but no hosting, someone would go to your website, but it would be blank there would be nothing there. But with hosting, someone goes to your website and they see all the text and images and information and all of the content is there. So again, hosting is a computer that you rent out from a big warehouse that has really fast internet so that your website loads really quickly. And that costs about $10 per month. In step three, we're going to install WordPress. Again, WordPress is what's called a content management system. It's just a fancy way of saying it helps you manage all your content. So instead of having to know code like HTML and CSS, all you have to do is type and upload pictures, and it makes it really easy to create a website. WordPress is the most popular way to make a website in the entire world. And luckily for us, WordPress is free. The next thing that we're going to do is create your website. And because you're not paying a web developer thousands and thousands of dollars to create your website, you're actually doing it yourself. That obviously is also going to be free. So that is all of the necessary cost involved in creating your website. So just to start out, you're going to need to pay for that domain name, which is $13 a year, and pay for the hosting, which is $10 a month. So your initial cost to get your website on the internet would be $23. But I have a huge discount, and that's going to bring the cost down to $10.37. Now that may change and fluctuate a dollar here or there a little bit, but it should be around there. And I think that's a great deal to get yourself on the internet and broadcasting to the entire world. So the first thing that we're going to do is steps one and two. And luckily, we could do that at the same place, HostGator.com. So I'm just going to open up my browser and go to HostGator.com. That's H-O-S-T-G-A-T-O-R dot C-O-M. And I think HostGator is really great. I've been with them for about 12 years. One of the best things is that they have 24-7, 365 live chat support, or you can email them or call them, and the prices are really good. So we have all these options. We have web hosting, cloud hosting, WordPress hosting, etc., but we don't need to pay attention to any of them. The only thing we need to pay attention to is the regular web hosting. Now you might think, why not WordPress hosting? But that just adds a whole bunch of bells and whistles and things that you don't need. So we're just gonna stick to the basic web hosting. So just go ahead and click on that. So once we do that, there are three different plans under web hosting. We have the hatchling plan, the baby plan, and the business plan. And what I recommend is the hatchling plan because you can upgrade to a plan at any time you want. So if you want to go to hatchling to baby, you can upgrade anytime you want. If you want to go to baby plan to business plan, you can upgrade anytime you want. And I just think the business plan has way too much stuff. You don't need all of the stuff that it includes, and you can always upgrade later. So we don't need the business plan. So between the hatchling plan and the baby plan, the difference is the baby plan lets you have as many domain names or websites as you want. So you can have your website.com, your dog's website.com, your friend's website.net, your mom's website.org. You can have as many websites as you want, but usually people just start off with one website. So that's why I recommend the Hatchling plan, and it is the least expensive, so that's also awesome. All right, so all we have to do is click Sign Up Now. And now we have two options here. We can register a new domain, or you can say, I already own this domain. So if you've bought your domain name already, or your website name already from a place like GoDaddy, and you've already purchased it, then you're going to want to click I already own this domain and fill it out right here. But if you're purchasing a new website name or domain name, then you're going to want to enter it in right here. 
And here we can choose the extension type. So I usually go with .com, but you can do .online, .site, .store, .website, .tech. Sometimes the .com is not available, so you can use the other ones. Or sometimes it's just kind of cool to have a .site or a .online or a .tech. But that is totally up to you. And once we choose our .com, .net, .org, it's gonna ask you, do you want all these other ones? And my advice is no, you don't want all of these other ones. They just wanna put on and add on some more money. I don't feel like people are going to try to get your same website and copy you. That just doesn't really happen. And so you don't need to do it. The next thing that we have here is domain privacy protection. And what this does is it hides all of your information. So when you buy or purchase a domain name, people can see all of your contact information like your name and your email and your address. But a lot of people don't like that. I think it's fine personally. But if you don't want that, you can add on domain privacy protection. But I trust people, so I'm just going to unmark that and continue on. Next, it says choose a hosting plan. We've already picked the hatching plan, which is great. And now it wants to know the billing cycle. So basically for this, the longer that you commit to, so if you pay 36 months up front, you're going to get a bigger discount, but it's going to cost you more up front. And the shorter amount of time that you commit for, say one month, it's going to cost you less up front, but you're not getting as big of a discount. So it's really up to you, but I'm going to choose just the month to month option. So it costs me the least amount of money up front. Next, choose a username and security pin and enter in your billing information. All right, once you do that, you have the option to pay with credit card or PayPal. I'm just going to choose credit card, put in your info and the expiration date. Then it's going to ask you if you want to add on additional services. And again, I don't find that you need it because you can always add them on later if you find that you do need it, but you probably won't need it at all. So I'm just going to uncheck those. Then we can see that the amount due is $25.95. But if we put in save code, that's S-A-V-E-C-O-D-E, and click validate, we can see that the amount due goes down to $10.37. Now this is my code, and I do get credit for it, so thank you very much. And it is the biggest discount code that there is. And if it isn't, please email me at tylermore at gmail.com and say, hey, what's up, man? It's not the biggest discount. No, but it really is the biggest discount on the entire internet. And I appreciate you putting it in because it gives me credit and helps me make these free tutorials. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. All right, I'm just going to scroll up because sometimes they add on the domain privacy protection after you add on the coupon, but they didn't this time. So that is good. It's $10.37. And we can review our order. We have 24 7, 365, phone, live chat, and email support, account activation, money back guarantee, your domain name, and our hatchling plan. All right, now you can click I have read and agree to the terms of service and click check out now. And you are done signing up for hosting. The next thing that we're going to do is install WordPress. So all you have to do is click on hosting, scroll down, and click launch quick install. Once you do that, you can exit out of this tab here and scroll down and click on WordPress and you can select a domain name for installation. Now I have a whole bunch of domain names, but you'll probably only have one. So I'm just going to choose the domain name I want to install it on. And we're going to leave this directory here blank because if you choose it, then WordPress will install on your website.com forward slash something instead of your website.com. So we're just going to leave that blank. We're going to click next and we're going to enter in a blog title. I'm just going to title this create a website and you can change this later at any time. So don't worry about it. And for admin user, I'm just going to put in my name and I'm going to put in my first name, last name and put in my email address. All right, and we're going to make sure automatically create a new database for this installation is marked off and we're going to check the terms of service agreement then click install all right we're just going to wait for wordpress to install really easy and our installation is complete so right now make sure to copy your username and password because it's important and print it or write it down or just put it in a file or something all right, now if we check our website, we can see that it is not going to work yet. And that's because the internet needs a little bit of time to realize that you've just got this new domain name. So it takes time to spread throughout the entire world telling the internet that, hey, this website exists. 
So we need to wait about two hours for our website to work. And it could take as much as 24 hours, but 99% of the time it takes about two hours and sometimes even less. All right, so we just have to wait for that. So I'm gonna take a little break right now and come back in a few hours. All right, so I am back and now I'm going to check the website again. And as you can see, it works. You have a live website on the internet that is your own that you've built. Now, of course, it doesn't have all of your content on it and the things that you want on it, but a lot of people charge a lot of money just to get you to this place right here. And you did it all yourself and it was super easy. All right, we can browse around your website and we can click on Hello World. This is just dummy content that WordPress automatically installs on your website. But that's not very much fun. We want to be able to log in and change it and make it your own. So we can click on this tab and copy this password right here. And now what we want to do is we want to go to yourwebsite.com forward slash WP dash A-D-M-I-N. And you're going to want to write that down or remember it. Of course, you can Google how do I log into WordPress and find it that way also. But this is how you log into your website. All right, and we know that our username is whatever you set it to, and our password is this big funky password. So we're just going to want to copy our password and paste it right in there and press login. All right, once we're logged in, we can close this tab to keep everything organized. And you can click I don't need help because we're going to be doing all the steps manually, and I think it's better to do it that way anyways. All right, once we do that, the first thing that I like to do is change my password because I can't remember that crazy funky password, so I want it to be something else. So to do that, go to Users and click on your username and scroll all the way down and click Generate Password. I'm going to hide my password here and type in your password, then press Update Profile. So the next thing that we're going to do is delete plugins. And what plugins are is it adds functionality to your website. And that's one of the things that makes WordPress great. Let's say that you want a contact form. Well, by default, WordPress doesn't come with a contact form. So you download a plugin that someone built, and now you have a contact form, or a photo gallery, or an image slider. So plugins add features to your website that people build, and it's really, really cool. But what hosting companies do is they install all of these extra plugins on your website because, well, they get paid to. And of course, they're in the business of, you know, providing a service, but also making money. And that's all right, but we don't want the plugins on our website. So what we're going to do is we're going to click plugins and we're going to check this box on top. And from the drop down, we're going to press deactivate and apply and now deactivate all of the plugins. But we still need to delete them. So we're going to check the box again and press delete and apply and press OK. And that will delete all of the plugins on your website so that you can start off fresh. The next thing that we're going to do is update our permalinks. And let me show you what that is. So if we hover up right here and click visit site, we go back to our site and we see this bar up here. And that shows us that we're logged in. So our users aren't going to see that. We just see that. But anyways, if we scroll down and click on the hello world, we can see up here it's ourwebsite.com forward slash index.php forward slash the date, then hello world. But that's not really professional. You don't go to Google's website and click their about page and see google.com forward slash index.php forward slash about. All you see is google.com forward slash about. It's simple, it's easy, and it's professional. So how do we get rid of that index.php? And that is where permalinks come into play. So to change the permalinks, all we have to do is hover over our website name and click dashboard. Then click settings and go to permalinks. Then I just like to click on post name. You can obviously change yours and make yours different, but I think post name is perfect. Then I click save changes. All right, now we can hover over our website name and visit our site again and click on hello world again. And now we can see it's just ourwebsite.com forward slash hello world. It is much simpler, much plainer, much cleaner, and much more professional. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is see if WordPress needs any updates. We want to update our website before we do anything because sometimes updates can cause some changes to our website. So we want to do it before and not after we've completed our website. So what you do is hover over your website name and click on dashboard and click on updates. 
Now we don't have any updates right now, but if we did, all we would do is click on update and it would update WordPress for you. The next thing that we're gonna do is install your theme. A theme is the design of your website, what your website looks like. And that's one of the reasons why I love WordPress so much because thousands and thousands of people make themes for WordPress. So you have thousands of designs to choose from. So we can see what our theme looks like by just visiting our website. So if we visit our website, this is what it looks like. It has this big image up here. And if we scroll down, we can see this is just what our website looks like. So how do we change that? How do we make it look much, much better? To do that, just go back into your dashboard and go to appearance, then themes. Now we see we have these three themes, but how do we add more? And that's really easy. We just click on add new. Once we do that, we can scroll through all of the themes and look at them. Or we can go to popular and look at the popular themes. They have many beautiful themes, but I do have a favorite theme. And this is the theme that you should install because this tutorial is based on this theme. So if you install a different theme, then you can't follow all the steps. They'll be different. So the theme that I love is Ocean WP. And again, this is my favorite theme. And we can go to details and preview, and we can see that it has five stars. It was rated 164 times, and that's all great. So we can exit out of there, and we can click install. So now the theme is installing, and once it does that, we can click on activate. And now our theme is activated on our website. Now up top right here, it says this theme recommends the following plugin, Elementor and Ocean Extra. So we're gonna click begin installing plugins. And again, plugins add features to your website. So it's extra things that the theme needs in order to work properly. All right, for now, we're just going to install Ocean Extra and we'll install Elementor later. So just click on install and it will install. Then we can click visit site and we can see that the theme or the design has changed. So it doesn't look that great right now, but it is the building block to a really beautiful website. So the next thing that we're gonna do is delete some pages and posts that WordPress installs automatically. We just wanna start off clean and blank and fresh. So to do that, let's go back into your dashboard by hovering over your name and clicking dashboard. Then click pages and we'll see this sample page and we can view it to see what it looks like. Yep, just looks like a regular sample page. And we can go back and we can click on trash. All right, once we've clicked on trash, it goes into the trash can and we can delete permanently. All right, so that's how you delete pages. Now we're gonna delete our posts. So just go to posts and hover over hello world and click on trash and we can go to trash and we can delete permanently. The difference between pages and post, pages are website pages like about, services, contact, products, or store, and posts are blog posts. So if you want to create a blog, you would click on post and create your blog post there. All right, so we're done deleting our pages and posts and that was really easy. The next thing that we're gonna learn how to do is change our title and tagline. So to do that, we can hover over our website name and click visit site, and we can see our title up here, create a website, and our tagline, just another WordPress website. Well, ours isn't just another WordPress website. Ours is something great and amazing, so we definitely wanna change that. To do that, click on customize up here, and then click site identity, and we can see our site title. I'll just change it real quick to show you that it changes. And this is where you should put your business name and your tagline describes what you do or gives you more information about what it is. So I'm just gonna put step-by-step step with no steps skipped. But if you did something like graphic design, then you would put what you do. So you can say you do drawings, illustrations, and websites. So it really describes what you do in the tagline. All right, once you're done with that, you can click on publish and exit out of there and we can see our title up here in our tagline right down here. But it's not always gonna look like that. That is kind of ugly. I don't really like that. So we're gonna remove that and make our website look much better a little bit later. But all right, that is how you add your title and tagline. But now our website is blank. So the next thing that we're gonna do is add pages to our website. To do that, hover over your title name and go to dashboard and click pages then click add new and you can enter in your page name we of course need a home page so i'm just gonna put in home and we're gonna leave it blank for now so we're just gonna click on publish 
All right, once we do that, we can add another page. So we're just gonna press add new and we're gonna name this one about and we're gonna click on publish. Then again, click on add new and we're gonna add services and click on publish. Then we're gonna click on add new and we're gonna put in contact and click publish. Then we can see all of our pages by clicking on pages and see all of the pages right here. Of course, you can add so many different pages. You can add features or pricing or a store page where people can buy things. And you can add a lot more pages. We're just gonna have these four pages because it is a tutorial and I wanna keep it as short as possible, but the options are limitless. All right, so that is how to add pages. We are done doing that. So the next thing that we're gonna do is edit our menu. To do that, hover over your name and click Visit Site. And we're gonna add links to this part right here. And we're also gonna remove this space right here. So let's click on Customize and let's click on Top Bar. Then click General and uncheck Enable Top Bar. That will remove this space up here. All right, once we do that, we can go back. And now let's add all of our menu items. So just click on Menus and click Create New Menu. Then we can name our menu and I'm just gonna name it Main and check it off as the main menu. Then press next and click add items. So we're just gonna add home and we can click on custom link right here and make sure it's our website name. Then we could click add items again and check off about services, contact, and we can go back. And if we look at the top right of our website, we can see home about services and contact are added to our menu. All right, now we could go back to edit more settings and go to header then go to general, and we can choose the style of our menu. We can do full screen, and that will make this little hamburger icon, and when we click it, it will make a full screen menu. Or we could do medium, which will make it in the center, or we could do transparent. And what this does, it makes the menu transparent so that if you build content on your website, you will see uh, the content through the menu. So it'll be transparent through it. So I think that's a really cool effect, so let's just do that one. All right, now there's a border at the bottom of our menu, and we don't want that, so I'm just gonna uncheck that. And for height, you can make your menu really big or really small. I'm just gonna keep it at 80. And for background color, I'm just gonna make this black and this is for the background color if it was not transparent. Now, sometimes you don't want your pages to have a transparent menu just because it doesn't make sense. And I'll show you that uh, a little later on in the tutorial. So we're just gonna make this a dark color, not all the way black, but pretty close to black. And under transparent header settings, I'm just gonna click on background color and I'm gonna make it black by click holding and dragging it all the way to the bottom left. All right, now we can mess with the transparent slider and if we slid it all the way to the left, it would be completely transparent. You would see right through it. And if we slide it all the way to the right, it wouldn't be transparent at all. So I'm gonna slide it to about 23. So it is mostly transparent, but you can still see the menu. All right, everything looks pretty good, so let's go back. And now let's change what the menu colors look like, like the home, about, services, contact. Let's change those colors. So just click on menu. And for link color, we're gonna make it all the way white. So we're gonna just drag it to the top left. And for link hover color, we're gonna change that. And what that does is when you hover over a link, like the home about services contact, it will change colors to indicate that you're hovering over a link. So we want it to be a slight change, but not too dramatic. So I'm just gonna make it a very light yellow. And right here for the hex color code, you can enter in your own number if you've copied and pasted it from somewhere else or you wanna use a very specific color. For current menu item, that is when you're on like, let's say you click on the about page and you're on the about page, the menu color can be different if you want it to be. I just want it to be white, so I'm just gonna make it white. Then I don't want a search box on my website, uh, but maybe you do, but I don't, so I'm gonna press disable and that will go away. Alrighty, everything is looking pretty cool. So we could click on the back button and click back again. Then we can go to typography. Now what typography is, it's basically the fonts or text used in your entire website. So you can change what the fonts look like for your site. And you could change any of the fonts here, but I wanna change the logo. And we can make the logo bigger or smaller. And we could change the font family. There are about 600 different fonts to choose from. And you can look at the fonts if you go to google.com forward slash fonts. But we have all of these to choose from, and I'm gonna choose one called permanent marker because it looks really cool. And later I'm gonna show you how to make a logo 
but if you just want this as your logo, that's totally cool, and I think it works great. All right, that looks good, let's go back. So just click on Main Menu, and we're gonna do a text transform, so we're gonna make this all uppercase. So now our menu is all uppercase, and of course you can make the font size bigger or smaller, and you can make the letter spacing more. So I'm just gonna make it two, and what that does is it spaces out the letters so that it's a little bit wider and has more space in between them. And that looks pretty good, so we're gonna go back, and we're gonna go back again. Now what we're gonna do is make that create a website, we're gonna make that font white. So just click on header and go to logo, and we're gonna upload a logo later, but if you wanna use this as your logo, that's awesome. So go to select color, and we're gonna make it white, and the logo should turn white. So now if your mouse is hovered over the logo, it will turn blue, but we are going to press select color and make that into, so it turns black. All right, that looks pretty cool. So now we can go back and go back again. So the next thing that we're gonna do is set our homepage to the actual homepage. Right now, our homepage is set up as a blog, but we don't want it to be like that. We want it to be as the page that we named home. So just go to homepage settings and go to a static page. So instead of our homepage being set to all these blog posts again, we're just gonna be a static page that we created. And it could be set to any page. It could be set to your about page or services page or contact page, but we're gonna set it to the page that we named home. So just click a static page and from the drop down box, we're gonna choose home. And this is the page that we created. So now when people go to your website, it will be to this page right here. All right, so we're all done with that. We can click on publish and we can exit out of there. And now we can see that this page on your main website is set to the home page. pretty cool. And we can also see that the navigation works here. If we go to about or services or contact, it all works. So we have set up our navigation. The next thing that I'm gonna do is show you how to add content the old way, the not so fun way, but it's still important to know. So to do that, you hover over your website name and go to dashboard and then click on pages and scroll down and find your homepage and click on it. Then we can add any content that we want right here. And you can toggle this toolbar and get more options and we can bold things or italics things, add different headings or paragraphs, add in images or links, but we're not gonna do any of that, but it's super easy. You can see right here, it's just like Microsoft Word. All right, then we're gonna press update to save all of our changes. And after we do that, we're gonna press view page. All right, and we can see our content here. This is the old way of creating a website. Not that fun, but kind of interesting. All right, let's look at the new and improved way of creating a website. And to do that, we need to get a plugin. And again, a plugin is something that extends the features of your website. So thousands of people make plugins or add-ons for WordPress. And that's really the beauty of WordPress. Anyone can create something to build and add on to it so you can do practically anything. So what we're gonna get here is a page building plugin. So to do that, just hover over your website and go to dashboard and click on plugins, then click add new. Now we can search for plugins and we can search for Elementor, E-L-E-M-E-N-T-O-R and press enter and it should be the first one and it has five stars and 300,000 active installations. So it's really good. You can go to more details and you can see the screenshots of what it does and what it looks like. And you can exit out of there and press install now. So now it's installed on your website, but it's not activated yet. So we just have to click on that activate button and it will activate. All right, now we have Elementor installed and activated on our website. So we can go back to pages and we can go to our homepage. And now we're gonna see this edit with Elementor button right here. And if we click on it, we can use the Elementor page builder. But we still have a title up here that we don't want and the sidebar that we don't want. We want to be able to use the entire page for Elementor. So to do that, just click on the back button and under content layout, go to 100% full width. And if you click on title on the left, you can disable the title. So that will get rid of the title and the sidebar, then press update. Once you do that, you can view the page and now we see no title and no sidebar. All right, but that's edit with Elementor. So let's just click on edit page and click edit with Elementor. Now that we've done that, it will have our old content here, but we can hover over it and press the X to delete it. And now we can add a new section. So just click add new section 
And you can add one column, two columns, three columns, four columns, a sidebar, all into your website. So we're just gonna choose one column and we can add in text heading and click this button up here to add more. Then we could put in a text editor. It's just like regular text or we can add in a video or a divider and we can also add in a button. We can also do a testimonial or a Google Maps. So you get the point, you can add practically anything. But sometimes this experience is also daunting, like how do you know what to do, or maybe you're not a designer, or you just don't have a lot of experience doing it, or maybe you just want to save a lot of time and not have to build all these things from scratch or from memory or from inspiration from others. So Elementor has done something really cool, and you can go scroll down here and press Add Template, and you can add an entire page. So you can press Insert, and it'll insert an entire website page into your website. And we can exit out of all of these to see what it looks like. And there we have it. We have an entire complete website already done, and all we have to do is change the information. And I think this is really cool of Elementor and it's really innovative and it's awesome to be able to just import it in just a second. So we can go ahead and click on save and we can exit out of there and press view page. And now we see we have a really cool looking website already. It doesn't have all of our content and everything on it, but you can see the potential. It is really cool. And of course you could build any of this by scratch if you want to, or you could just change out the information. Just click on it and we can change this to how to make a WordPress website and we can shift the columns over to make them smaller and we can scroll down and change any of this content and if we go to style we can change the colors we can delete images and add our own and it's all really easy all right so that is really really awesome and so cool and innovative of elementor to do that and to allow us to use any of their templates but i think it could be taken one step further instead of importing an entire website you can import just different sections that you want because really you don't want to import an entire website. Usually you don't need the entire website to show up. You just need a certain section. You just need a client testimonial. You just need a call to action. You just need a video. So you don't need the whole thing. You just need certain sections. And that's what I've done. I've made all of these different sections that you can actually import into your website. And with the click of a button, it can show up. So I think that's even cooler than what Elementor has done, which is super awesome. So we're just gonna remove all of these sections and let me show you the even better way of creating your website. So now let's find the templates that we wanna use on our website. To do that, just go to tyler.com, that's T-Y-L-E-R dot C-O-M, and you can click on templates or view templates down here. All right, once we do that, we have all of these different templates to choose from, and these are all just different sections to choose from that you can insert into your website. And over here are different categories, so you can search for left, right image text. That means that there's an image on the left or right side and text on the left or right side. So we can view that and we can see all of the templates that offer that, or we can see the features templates. And this is basically if you have different features for your app or product or different features for your services, you have a bunch of different services, you can list them here. But now let's start creating our website. And I'm just gonna click on headers and heroes. This is like the main image of your website, usually at the top, but it can be used anywhere. You can get creative with it. And just scroll down and look for the one that you want. I kinda like this one, uh, V1. So let's just go ahead and click on it and look at it. And it's pretty cool, it has a video in the background and a big call to action button. And all we have to do is click on the download V1 template. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop in a new folder called templates and press create. Of course, you can save the file wherever you want. And I'm going to save it there. All right, let's go back and let's search for another template. Let's just uh, keep on scrolling down. Maybe we'll go to page two. And I like this one, P4. So we can just click on it and you can press control and click if you're on a Mac or command and click if you're on a PC or you can right click and open it in a new tab to open it in a new tab. All right, this one is pretty cool. I really like it. It looks awesome. So I'm gonna press download template and save it. Exit out of there. And now let's get a client and testimonial. We have all of these to choose from. I'm just gonna do this one. It looks really cool, Q4. And you can see it has a video in the background, which is awesome. So I'm gonna download that and press save and exit out of there. 
Then I'm going to go to call to action. And sometimes you want uh, your call to action at the bottom of the website so that when people reach the bottom, they actually have something else to do or somewhere else to go and not just leave your website. I don't like any of these. So I'm going to go to page two and look at Q1. All right, that looks awesome. Let's download that template and go back and let's actually go back to page two i think i saw one that i did like yeah let's try q3 that looks pretty cool all right so let's just download that template save it and we can exit out of there okay now that we have all of our templates downloaded to our computer we need to upload them into our website so to do that we can exit out of there on the bottom left and press go to dashboard and we can actually press stay because let's save our changes click save and now exit and go to your dashboard and go to Elementor, then go to My Library. We're going to be adding templates to our Elementor library. Let's go back. Let's press Import Templates and press Choose File. And let's add them all. So we're going to add Q3. We're going to open. We're going to import now and it will import. Then we're going to press Import Templates again. Choose File, Q1. Open, then import, and you get the point. Just import all of the rest of these. I'm going to speed this up a little bit because it is repetitive. All right, now that all of our templates are imported, we can go back to Pages, and we can click on our home page, and we can click Edit with Elementor. That should launch Elementor, then click Add Template. And instead of pre-designed templates, click on My Templates, and they should all be there. And now we're just going to insert them. So we're going to insert V1, and bam, it's there. And we're going to add template, and we're going to go to My Templates, and we're going to insert P4. There it is. And add template, go to My Templates, insert Q4, pretty cool. Add templates, My Templates insert q1 and we got one more so go to add templates my templates and insert q3 all right so i think that is the new and improved way of creating a website i think it makes it much better you can combine all these different templates all these different sections into so many different combinations to get your website looking exactly like you want and not insert this entire page where there's a bunch of things that you don't really want so you have to delete them all. So I think it is much better and I hope you're as excited about it as I am. It'll make my job much easier building websites for people. I know that. All right, now we can edit the page. So what I'm going to do is just click on this bike tour over here and I don't want it. So I'm going to go over to the pencil and I'm going to exit out of there. And there's a little space right here and you can make this space bigger or smaller if you want, but I don't need a space here. So I'm just going to exit out of that one too. And then I'm going to click on the title and I'm going to change it over here. I'm going to type in love what you do. And for this bottom text here, I'm going to change it and I'm going to add in some text, create a website and start your business so you can do what you really love. All right, then I'm going to click on the button and I'm going to link it somewhere else. So I'm going to link it to forward slash about. So when someone clicks on it, it's going to go to yourwebsite.com forward slash about. And I hope that's where your about page lives. If not, you have to change that link to maybe forward slash about dash me or whatever your about page is named. All you have to do to get that name is to visit your about page and whatever it says up on top in the URL field, that is the name. So just copy the forward slash about forward slash about dash us forward slash about dash me or whatever it is. All right, so that will link to that page. And now to change the button style, just click on style and we can scroll down and we can change the background color. So maybe I want the background color to be transparent. So you can make it go all the way down to transparent and that will make the button see-through, which is a cool effect, but you can't really see it. So let's add a border to it. So under border type, we can choose the drop down. We can go to solid and add in a width. I'm just going to put two. So it's two pixels wide. And now we can see that see through button, which is really awesome. All right. And now maybe we want to change the love what you do font. So all we have to do is click on it and go to style and under typography, make sure that that is checked on. And for size, we can increase it or decrease it. I'm going to increase it to 94. And for family, that's the font family. 
I'm going to make it permanent marker just like the logo. So it gives a cool little effect. It looks like it's written over the video playing, which is cool. All right, for line height, I'm going to change that to one. And that's how tall the line is. And for letter spacing, I'm going to space it out a little bit more at 0.7 so that the letters have a little room to breathe. And now you see how it goes on two lines. I don't want that to happen. And that's because the content width is too small. So I'm gonna show you how to make it bigger. All you have to do is click on this whole section. So this is the edit section button right here. And if we click on it, you can make your content width a thousand and it will allow the words not to be on two different lines. All right, what we want to do next is maybe add some space to the top and bottom. You see how it's kind of scrunched? It's kind of not very big, this section here. One of the coolest things that you could do in Elementor is add spacing and padding to the top and bottom of the entire section. So to do that, click on Advanced. And under padding, we could change this to 240, so it gives a lot of space on the top, and 100, so it gives some space on the bottom. And that looks really awesome. And some more amateur websites, they don't really adjust the spacing correctly. And I think adding a lot of space, giving space to things, is really one way of making your website look a lot more professional. All right, that looks pretty good. We can also go back to style, and this is the entire section style. And if we want, we can change this link because maybe we don't want it to be this video. We want to choose the video that we want to be on this background. So we can change that there. But first, let's go to background overlay and let's make it not purple because maybe we don't want it to be purple. So we can just click on it and press clear, and that'll get rid of the purple, and go to opacity and make it zero. So it's all the way transparent. And what you're seeing here is a black and white video. So we can't change the video from being black and white. We can't make it color, because that's just the way the video is. So we're gonna actually swap out the entire video. So to do that, click on background. And up here where it says background type, you have three different types, one's the classic background. One is a gradient background, so it goes from one color to another. And the third one is the video background. So right now we're already on the video background, so we're just going to keep it as that. And we're going to go search for a video. So we can just open up a new tab and go to youtube.com and let's search for a video. I'm just going to type in GoPro Hero 6. That's the newest GoPro. And just click on the first video. And that looks pretty awesome. So all you have to do is copy this URL right here. So just right click and copy or command C on a Mac, control C on a PC, and we can paste it in right here. Now that will load any YouTube video right into your website, which is really sweet. If you have a video that you wanna use, like you have some footage of the beach or the mountains or a view or whatever, then I recommend uploading it to YouTube first. Anyone can get a free account on YouTube and then just copying the URL and putting it in here just like this. And I recommend that because YouTube compresses the video for you and it does all these complex things that make it really good to stream online. And here is our video now, and that looks really sweet. All right, this is turning out great. So let's go down to the next section, and that looks pretty good. Of course, we could change any of the text or any of the buttons or anything that we want. Let's go down to this next section. We can change this quote, um, and this one looks pretty good too. And this hello section also looks great. Let's change this section down here. So let's click on the text. Instead of saying writing made simple, let's say WordPress made simple. I hope this is simple for you guys. If it is simple, please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you. And let's scroll down some more and let's get rid of this image right here. We don't need it. And let's actually add a button to the bottom section, but let's not create a new button. Let's just duplicate the button on top. So scroll up, go to the pencil icon and hover over it, then click on the duplicate button and click hold and drag. And you sort of have to wiggle it a little bit. It's a little weird, but just like wiggle it down and drag in the button and let it go. All right, that's looking pretty sweet. Let's add something else by clicking on this box up here and dragging in the spacer. 
and just increasing the space. Let's do 100. If I can get it, I'll just type it in here. 100. So 100 pixels of space at the bottom. That looks really nice. And our website is looking all done. I am very happy with it. That's looking really cool. We did it in almost no time. Let's see what it looks like on the mobile version. So if we click this button over here, and click on mobile, we can see that it still looks pretty good, but the join the next tour button is kind of squished. So let's go back to the desktop version and let's make sure we save that first. And let's exit out of there and view our page. And we noticed that on Elementor, when we looked at the mobile version, the video still worked. But actually, if we make our page smaller, we're gonna see that that video actually disappears because videos don't really play in the background like on your phone. So on a really small screen, the, the videos will stop playing. It just doesn't work. It's not the same technology really. So it doesn't work well on your phone just playing a video in the background. And the button again is sort of messed up. So let's fix those things. So we can exit out of there. And the first thing that we want to do is fix the issue where the video is not playing like on your phone because it just won't play in the background on your phone. So to do that, click on the top section and under style, under background fallback, click the button to add an image and click on whatever image that you want. And I'll show you how to get images later in just a second. So we're just gonna click any image that we want and press open and insert media. Okay, so now we have this image that will work anytime the video doesn't load. So anytime the video is too slow or they're on a mobile device and the video is just not loading, anytime that happens, the image will show. So that's really cool. It's like a safety guard against bad things from happening. All right, so we can save that and exit out of there and view our page. Now, if we squish the page, we're gonna see instead of being blank, it will show that image in the background. And that looks really cool. We still need to fix some things like this love what you do headline is too far up. So we need to add a little more space to the top and the join the next tour button is on two lines, we only want it on one line. So let's go ahead and fix that. So let's go back to Elementor and go to the mobile view and click on the top section, then go to advanced. And now we have all of these buttons. So we have these buttons for desktop, tablet, or mobile. Make sure the mobile button is clicked. And under padding, we are going to unlink the values. And that's so that each of the top, right, bottom, and left can be different. So we're going to add 100 to the top. And so that is only going to be on the mobile view. Only when that screen is that small, it's going to trigger that. All right, so let's save that. And let's go to our page and click refresh. And now let's see when we squish the page, we can see that more space was added to the top. And that looks really great. All right, we can even add a little bit more. I'll just put 125 and that's going to look perfect. So the next thing that we need to do for our mobile website is to click on the button, join the next tour, then go to style and we can change the letter spacing, but make sure the mobile icon is highlighted and we can mess with that. It still goes on the next line though. So we can scroll down a little bit and under text padding, we can enter in 20 and that will make the padding a little bit less. So it works perfectly on the mobile website. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's scroll down to the bottom and click on the bottom, join the next tour button. And let's go to style and let's change the letter spacing to zero. And that seemed to work for that section. So let's just click on save and go to our website and press refresh. And now if we look at it, we can see that that headline is looking great and the button looks perfect. And if we scroll down, the button looks perfect there also. So now our website is completely mobile friendly. All right, so we can exit out of there and view our desktop page one more time to make sure everything is looking fantastic, which it is. And now we can go to the dashboard because we are done setting up our homepage. The next thing that we're gonna do is create our about page. So what you wanna do is click on go to dashboard and now let's import the templates for our about page. So just go to Elementor, my library, open up tyler.com and click on view templates. 
So then I'm going to click all templates and just look for something that I like. Maybe go to the second page. Keep on looking. And I like this Z1. And actually, maybe I'll use the Z2, Z3, and Z4. I'll use all of them. And that will be my about page. Just keep it pretty easy. And you could command or control click if you're on a Mac or PC and open them all up into new tabs. All right, then go ahead and download each one. We've already done this, so I'll speed it up a little bit. And once all of those are saved, we can exit out of there and go to import templates, choose file and import your template. Press open and import now. And I'm going to speed through all of that because we have done that before again, and it's really easy. So just import all of your templates. All right, and once you've imported all of your templates, just go to Pages and click on About. And you want to make sure that the content layout is 100% full width and the title is disabled so that we have the whole entire page to play around with. Then press Update and click Edit with Elementor. All right, now we can add our templates in. So just click Add Templates and click on My Templates and we'll add all of them. So I'm going to add Z1, Insert, Click Add Templates, go to My Templates, Z2, Insert, Add Templates, My Templates, Z3, Insert, Add Templates, My Templates, Z4, and Insert. All right, once they're all inserted, you can click on anything and change the information. You can click on the button and change the text right here or change the link. Let's have this link to our contact page, which lives at forward slash contact. And that is looking pretty sweet. If we scroll to the top and click on the edit section part, then go to style and we can choose this position as fixed for the image or scroll or default. With default, when you scroll down, it will scroll like normal. And if we choose scroll and scroll down, it again, it scrolls like normal, I guess. But if we choose fixed and scroll down, you can see the image stays in the same spot when you scroll down and it adds a cool little effect. So we're just gonna keep that. All right, so we're gonna save all of that and exit out of there and view our page. And that is a really cool looking page. And you can tell your story on the About Us page. And they could click and go to the contact page, but we haven't built that yet. And if we squish it simulating a mobile phone and scroll down we can see that it's a little funky we see that uh, Chris Brown is all the way to the left and so is Jesse Olive pretty sure these are just made-up names but we're gonna fix them anyways all right so let's go back to Elementor and let's click on this button down here and click mobile to simulate the phone and let's click on our button because we want to add a little space to this button because it's a little cramped so if we click on it and go to style and choose typography as on then go to line height let's pump it up a little bit we will make it 23 that looks pretty good all right then if we click on chris and go to style click on content Make sure the mobile button is highlighted and click center. It should center. And now we can click on Jesse and go to style, then click content and press center. Now we can scroll back up, press save, refresh our page and view the page looking great on desktop and all centered and perfect on mobile. All right, that's perfect. Let's exit out of there. Exit out of there also and go to our dashboard. And we are done creating our about page. The next page that we want to make is a services page. Of course, this can be any page that you want. So let's go to Elementor and let's go to My Library and let's find some services templates to put on our page. So again, we can go to tyler.com, that's T Y L E R dot C O M, and we could just go to forward slash templates save us some time and let's go to headers and heroes and I like this v5 right here so I'm just going to open it up in a new tab and let's click on features and scroll down let's go to page two scroll down page three I guess maybe page four we'll have some luck page five we gotta have some luck and save the best for last so let's click on c4 and now let's go to a miscellaneous one and click on P2. And there we have it, our services page, V5, C4, and P2.
So let's download v5 and download c4 and download p2 and exit out of all of that. Then go to import templates, choose file, and just import all of those. And once you're done importing, you could click on pages and go to services. And we can view our page and we see that we have that title and sidebar that we want to get rid of. So we're just going to go back. And under content layout, we'll do 100% full width. That'll get rid of the sidebar. And under title, we'll disable. That'll get rid of the title and press update. All right, then we can view our page and we see that there's nothing here. It's a blank, clean page for us to work on. So we're just going to press edit page and edit with Elementor. Then we're going to add template and we're going to go to my templates and we're going to add all of them. So we're going to add V5. Very cool. Add template. Go to my templates and we're going to add C4. Very nice. Scroll down, go to add templates, go to my templates and P2. All right. Awesome. And now we are going to edit it to our liking. First, let's click on the edit section. So we're going to edit the top section. And we're going to add a little more space at the top. So we're going to go to advanced and where padding is, we're going to put 170. And we can see padding and margin. So padding is on the inside and margin is on the outside. So margin would push everything away and add like a blank white space at the top. If you put like 100 margin at the top, but padding adds it to the inside. So there's more padding at the inside of the top so you still see the background and everything it just pushes all of the content down but within it i hope that makes sense all right once we're done with that we could click on the title and let's change it to what we do best and go to style and for the font family let's do open sans that's one of my favorite fonts i think that's the font i use on my own website and then if you want to look at the fonts you can go to google.com forward slash fonts and check out all of the fonts here and you can uncheck these to only show handwritten fonts or serif or sans serif fonts or whatever you want. And we can exit out of there. I just want to show you those fonts and click to edit the section again, then go to style and we're going to change the background overlay. So go to background overlay and maybe we want it to be blue and then green. So this will give us a gradient background overlay, which I think is a really cool effect. So click choose your color. And we can drag this to green and we could choose this one as blue. Or what you could do is you can add in your own color. If you've copied a color from a different part of your website, you could just add in this hex code here. There we go. I like that green. And now we will add in a blue and there we go. So we have that nice blue. All right, so that looks good. It goes from green to blue. And now we're gonna change all of these icons. So instead of Facebook, let's type in WordPress find that icon and let's type in WordPress. So maybe we do WordPress and for the next one we do the same thing. Let's type in paintbrush and put in design because maybe we do some design and let's go to the next one. Click on it and use a pencil and type in content because maybe we also do people's content. All right, that's looking pretty sweet. Now what we can do is change the second headline. Instead of fall in love with our features, we can say we're pretty good at these things too. And we could click this line here and we can make it a different color or of course type in any color that we want. And we can click on this real time stats and change the content if we want or go to style and go to content and change the color. I'm just going to paste in that same color green as a line and I'm going to do that for all of them. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit so I'm not wasting any of your time and make them all that green color. All right, now we're going to edit this last section here. So let's click on edit the section and then go to style and let's delete this image. But before we do that, let's actually search for a new image. And one of my favorite websites to get images that are free and copyright free and you can use them however you want is pixabay.com. That's P-I-X-A-B-A-Y dot C-O-M. And we can search for interior design or anything else. And if we scroll down, this one looks pretty cool. So let's go and click free download and I'll do the 1920 and press download. Nope, it wants me to sign up for full resolution. So the 1280 is just gonna be fine. 
All right, so once we do that, I'll just save it to my desktop and call it design and press save, exit out of there. And I will delete this image and add a new image and then go to upload files, select files and find the image I just downloaded to my desktop and press open. It will upload, then we'll click insert media and it will insert. And that is a pretty cool picture. I like that, that's pretty sweet. All right, after we do that, let's click on advanced and unlink these padding values. And we can add padding to the top and that's way too much. So I'm gonna add a little bit less and you can add padding also to the bottom. So it gives a little bit more space to the top and bottom. Another way you can accomplish the same thing is to delete the padding from the top and bottom of the section, make it zero, and then actually click on this column right here where it says we're almost ready. So click on that, then go advanced, and then go to margin and unlink the values. And the margin is on the outside, so it's gonna push this away from it. So if we add stuff here, it's gonna give more space, not on the inside, but on the outside of the top and bottom. So I'm just gonna add 50 and 50 to the top and the bottom here. And that way, this little box right here will never touch the top and bottom. It'll always have like a little border around it. And that's exactly what we want. So that looks great. All right, instead of saying we are almost ready, I'm gonna put, we can help you with, and these are gonna be all my things that I can help you with. So now we can go to style, and maybe we wanna change the color make it sort of black and go to size and adjust that a little bit. And we can click on this design here and we can go to style and we could change the color and we could change it to any color that we want. And then you can click on content and go to style and change it to any color that you want again. I'm just gonna paste in the same color and then do that for front end, put in any color you want and do that for back end, put in any color, very easy stuff. And what we can also do is click on something like front end and add in a title and that will go above it and that would look fine. Or we can go below for inner text and put it in right there. So I wanna say that I'm good at WordPress. 75, no way, I am 100%. All right, but maybe my design is not 100%. Maybe that's 82, and that looks awesome. Then we'll take the social media links and exit out of there. And for more updates, follow us. We're just gonna say start today. It's gonna to be a little call to action and go to style and change the font color to black or blackish. And then for font family, I want to do open sans again. And for the space, I'm just going to put in less space and adjust it there. And then I'm going to add a button by clicking on this button right here. And then going to button and dragging it in. After I do that, I click on the button. And for the text, I'll put start. And for the link, I'll put contact. So they'll click on this and then they'll go to our contact page and they can contact us there. For the size of the button, let's just do medium. And for the style, you can click on style and go to border radius and put in 20 and that will make all your edges rounded. And for text padding, you could change that. That's how much padding is around the start button. So you could put 10, 50, 1000. You would probably never want a thousand. That's a lot. 100, 10, 100. All right, that looks a little funky. Sorry, I must change that. Maybe 220s at the top and bottom, 260s. Man, that still looks weird. All right, maybe we want the border radius to be 50 all the way around. Let's turn typography on. I think it needs to be a bigger size or something. Not that big. All right, 23 it is. Still looks funny. I don't know. Do a better job than this, guys. All right, we'll do 40 and 40, 10 and 10. All right, that looks all right. That's pretty good. I like it. Maybe make the text a little bit smaller. I'm going crazy with this, I know. This is just a demonstration. You'll do a lot better job when you have time, but that looks pretty good. All right, now let's also add a gradient background to this background. So we wanna click on the entire section, then go to style and click background overlay, then click gradient, cause it's gonna go from one color to the next. And now we can click on the color for the first color and we're gonna make it green. And for the second color, we're gonna make it blue. You can type in the hex code, make that blue. And we can type in a hex code for the green also, if we want a very specific color. All right, so now we have our blue and green 
and it goes from green at the top to blue at the bottom. But what if we wanted it to go from green on the left to blue on the right or vice versa? You can change that with first location, which is when does a blue and green start? Does it start in the middle? Does it start in the beginning? Let's make it start at 39 out of 100. And for blue, it's the same thing. Where does it start or where does it end actually? So we're gonna have it end at 100. And here's the angle. So now we can rotate the angle and let's do 240. So it starts at blue at the bottom left corner and ends at green at the top right corner. All right, so it matches this up here where it starts at blue at the bottom, green, at the top and it's the same on the bottom right here and that looks pretty cool it matches pretty great all right let's just click on save and save all of that and exit out of there and view our page and this is our page and i love how the navigation picks up on that blue on the left and green on the right i think that is a really cool effect and if we scroll down our page is looking awesome and the we can help you with pops up with all of our abilities and it just slides to the right very cool and i love it if we squish it down like it is a mobile phone, it's a little crammed up here, the what we do best. But other than that, the page is looking really awesome. So let's just fix that real quick. Let's go back to Elementor and go to the mobile view and click on the very top section and go to advanced. And under padding, let's put in 130. Press save. Go back to check our website and click on refresh. Check the mobile version and that is looking perfect. And everything else looks great and mobile friendly and awesome. All right, let's exit out of there, go back to our desktop view, exit out of there and go to our dashboard. We are done with our services page. The next thing that we're gonna do is our last page, which is our contact page. But before we do it, let's import all of our templates. So go to Elementor and then my library. Once we do that, we could go to tyler.com forward slash templates. And let's actually search for a template. I'm going to search for map. And here we have U5, a nice map. And let's just download it right here. Save it to our templates folder. Press save. Go back to templates. And let's click on contact. And let's maybe go to page two. Maybe page three. And let's try this K5. All right, that looks pretty cool. We can delete this map here and put in a contact form. So let's download the template and save it and exit out of there. Then let's import templates. Click Import, Choose File, click on Templates. And you've done this before. So find the template and open and import now. Do that again for the other template. Import Templates, Choose File, K5, Open, Import Now. And now let's start building our page. So go to pages and click on contact. And under content layout, let's do 100% full width and click on title and disable it. Then we can press update and click edit with Elementor. Then we can add template and go to my templates and let's add U5, which we'll put in the map and then add template, my templates, and let's go to K5 and insert that. And if we click on the map, we can change the address. So the address will be where the pin is. You can also put in a city or even a state. You could change the zoom level. So it's really zoomed in or regularly zoomed in. And that looks pretty good. So let's scroll down and let's exit out of this map because we already have a map. And let's click on these icons and go to style and go to icon and we can change the color and we can type in our color here if we want. I'm just going to do 2169 EF. Then click on the title and change the title to contact us. And let's click on the edit section. And instead of full width, which will make the contact us section and the form go all the way to the side, let's make it boxed so it stays in a little box. And let's not put anything in here. It'll just be default. All right, for content position, we want it to be default because if it's in the middle, then all the content that we add is just going to be in the middle of the section instead of default, which is what we want, which is on the left side of each section. All right, now we can go to advanced and I think there's too much spacing at the top. So I'm going to change that from 150 to 100 and just make a little less space at the top. Next, we're going to change all of this information. So I'm going to change my address right here and I'm going to put in my phone number right here. 
and I'm going to delete this because um, I don't have two phone numbers and I'm going to put in my email address tylermore at gmail.com right here. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's save that and we're not adding a form yet because we can't do that here. We need to do it somewhere else. Um, but before I do that, actually, let me go to style and make this contact us open sans and make it less bold. Oh, well, maybe a little more bold than that. All right, that looks right. All right, so let's click save. And what we're gonna do next is add a contact form right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Exit out of there and press go to dashboard. And again, we need a plugin. And again, a plugin adds new cool features to your website like a contact form. So just go ahead and click on plugins, then click add new and search for contact form. And one of my favorite ones is contact form seven, even though the one on the right is also super easy and maybe even a little bit easier than contact form seven, but I've been using contact form seven for so long that I can't part with it. But WP forms is super awesome also. All right, so we're just gonna click install now. And then we're gonna click activate to activate our contact form seven. And we're gonna to go to contact and we're just gonna click on contact form one. And here you can change all of these fields, um, but you wanna make sure that you go to mail and change this or don't, but just make sure that it has your email address because this is where when they fill out the form, this is where it gets sent to. So you wanna make sure this has your email address in it. And now what we can do is copy this contact form code here, it's called a short code, and go back to pages and click on contact, then click edit with Elementor. And now what we can do is search for short code, S-H-O-R-T-C-O-D-E, and drag it in there. And this will allow you to put that code into your page. So just go ahead and paste that code in there and your contact form will show up. Now, when anyone emails you, it will go straight here and you can email them back and start a relationship. All right, and we can adjust the size so that the contact us is a little bit smaller, that section, and the contact form is a little bit bigger. So adjust it to whatever you want. Then click save and exit out of there and view our page. And now we can see our page and it is really cool, but maybe this contact us should be a little bit down. So it's a little more even with the form. So let's go here. We can click on this section, this column section right here, go to advanced, unlink the values for the margin and just put 10 here and press save. And now if we refresh that contact us should go a little bit down and that looks a lot more even in level to my eye. All right, so that's pretty awesome. But if we look up here, we see the menu is over this map and it looks pretty weird. So how do we make it so that the menu is just like a regular menu and not a see-through menu, but only on this page? And to do that, all we have to do is not go to Elementor page, but click on edit page and click on header, then click under header style, go to minimal and press update. Then view our page. And now we can see it looks much, much better. And you can change this header color it, just like you did on the transparent one by clicking on customize and header, I believe. All right, so that looks pretty sweet. And if we look at the mobile version and squish it down a little bit, that looks perfect and that looks awesome. The next thing that we're gonna do is add a logo right here instead of text, even though the text looks pretty awesome. So to do that, we're just gonna exit out of there and we're gonna exit here and we're gonna go to the dashboard. Once we do that, we could just click on visit site and let's open up a new tab and go to logomaker.com. That's L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R dot C-O-M. We can exit out of this tutorial and find our logo. So I'm just going to look for triangle. I don't know. That seems like a pretty cool logo, maybe. And I'm just going to search and search and search and search and search for the right triangle. Not a right triangle, for the correct triangle. And this one looks pretty cool. So just click on it. And in Logo Maker, you can click, hold, and resize. You can add text here. You can put in your business name and drag it to the side. Or if you want to be like Apple, you can just have the logo there. You can change the font, but we want a more modern looking logo for our website where it's just the logo. That's what like Apple does. And uh, that's what Logo Maker also does. If you see in the top left, it's just their logo. It doesn't say their name. So we're gonna add that and to do that, we're just going to 
right click on the text and press delete and drag it so it's a big size. It doesn't matter the exact size. Then we're gonna make it white and you can't see the logo there, but it is there. And we're gonna press save in the top right corner and press download and agree to give credit. All right, once we do that, we will go to desktop and just name it logo.png. Make sure it says .png because PNG makes it so that there can be transparency so that it's not like a square box. Like if you save it as a JPEG, it would be like a square box white in back of it. But if you do a PNG, then it will be like see-through. All right, so save that to your desktop or wherever. We can exit out of Logo Maker. Then we can click on Customize and go to Header and click Logo. Then click Select Logo and go to Upload Files select files, go to your desktop or wherever you downloaded it to, and choose the logo and press open. Then it will upload and choose select and click skip cropping because we don't want to crop it. That will take off the top and the bottom. So skip cropping and now we can see our logo is huge, but we don't want it that big. So go under max width and just change it. So I'm going to change it to about, let's see, 45. That looks pretty good. I like it. I like it a little small, but depending on your logo's dimensions, it will definitely be different. Then we can press publish and exit out of there. And now we can see we have this really cool looking logo on our website. And that is awesome. So our website is almost done, almost complete, almost perfect. But we have this bottom footer area here and we want to change it and make it look much better. So just go to the dashboard and go to Elementor and go to my library and now we're going to import a footer template so i've created footer templates for you guys so you don't need to do all the work yourself all right so open up a new tab and go to tyler.com click on templates and click on miscellaneous and we have a choice of a black footer here or a blue footer let's go with the black one and press download template and press save it's downloaded now we need to import templates choose file Go to templates. Let's do the X1 template. Press open and import now. All right, once we're done with that, this is going to be a little bit different. So we need to go to theme panel and go to my library and add new. So we're adding a new template to our theme panel. Put in the title. You could just put in footer. And again, just like everything else, we want the content layout to be 100% full width and the title to be disabled. Now we can publish that. Click edit with Elementor, add a template, go to my templates and go to the X1 and insert it. And here we're looking at doubles because one is a desktop version and one is a mobile version. So the desktop version will only show on the desktop and the mobile version will only show if you're on a phone or a screen that's really small. So to make sure that your menu is in here, again, just click on it and go to select menu and make sure it says main or whatever you named your menu. Next, we're going to change out this logo. So just click on it and press delete. And then we're gonna add in one and we're gonna add in the A and press insert. That looks pretty cool. And you see it's cut off here a little bit on the right side. And that's because the image size is set to thumbnail and not full. So we want it to be full. And now we see the whole thing. And we can adjust the size here. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and let's duplicate it and just click hold and drag it to the bottom one. And let's go over this pencil and exit out of there. And let's make it in the center because when all of this gets squished on a small screen, it's all going to stack up on top of each other. So we want everything to be in the center on the mobile version. All right. And we can increase the size a little bit on that one. Now we can go over to the social media icons and click on Facebook. Actually, we'll keep Facebook. And for Instagram, I'm just going to type in YouTube and I'm going to put in my YouTube URL. And I'll click on Facebook and I'll change it to my Facebook URL. All right, we'll hover over the pencil and we'll press the duplicate button and we'll just drag that below and we will exit out of this one and we will center it so that it goes in the center. All right, that's about it. So let's press save and exit out of there and view page. And this looks really weird because we're just viewing the footer page. But if we go to our home page and we scroll down, we're not gonna see it because we haven't added the footer to our page yet. So what we need to do is click on customize and let's scroll down so that we can see the footer. Then click on footer bottom and we're actually going to disable it and that will leave us with just a black bar. 
Then we're going to go back and go to footer widgets and select template. So we're going to select our template that we added. So now footer is here. So we're gonna select that. And now we see our footer there, but really there's black space on the top and bottom. So if we go to select color and we make it a different color, we can actually see it. And we don't want all of that color there. So where it says padding, we're just gonna put in zeros. Sometimes when you put in one zero, it doesn't work. So sometimes you have to put in double zeros. So just put in double zeros and we still see color on the left side and the right side. And that's because the footer is not stretching all the way across. So let's publish all of that and exit out of there. And let's go back to our dashboard and then go to theme panel, my library and click on footer and edit with Elementor. And let's click on the top section first and boxed is fine right here. But where it says stretch section, let's click on yes and let's click on the second section and also press yes. All right, that should solve the issue where it doesn't stretch out all the way. But we also forgot a step here. Um, if someone clicks on the logo at the bottom, it should take you back to the home page. That is the standard way of how things work usually. So let's click on the first logo and under link to, let's do custom URL and let's put in our website name. All right, and let's do that for the second one. Just click on it, go to custom URL and put in our website name. Now we exit out of there and view the page and it looks funny, but if we go to the home page and we see it and it'll link to our home page and it stretches all the way across and it looks pretty fantastic. Now if we squish it, the mobile version comes into play and everything is centered and that looks pretty awesome too. The next thing that we're gonna do is change our fave icon, and that's this little icon up here. You could barely see it, but you see it looks like a page right now. We want our logo to be in there. But if we keep our logo as white, because it's a white background, you're not gonna be able to see it. So I wanna change our logo into a black logo so that we can actually see that icon. So to do that, click on Customize, then click Site Identity. And we can read here, site icon should be square and at least 512 by 512 pixels. All right, so let's go to logomaker.com. Again, that's L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R with no E, dot C-O-M. Exit out of there and let's search for that triangle again. And I will speed this up because it takes a long time to find this triangle. All right, so we found the triangle and now I'm gonna make it bigger. Now, if we move this layers panel, we can see the crop button hiding behind it in the bottom right. So just click on it. And if we adjust it, we can see in the top right the dimensions. And the dimensions, again, if we look on the website, need to be 512 by 512. So let's go back to Logo Maker and let's adjust it. So we can see the width, 512. And the height needs to be also 512. There we go. Then let's crop it right here. Let's move it and double click to crop. And now that it's cropped, we can click and drag the logo so that it fills it out and try to fill it out as much as possible. Then click save logo. All right, and press download and just type fave icon, exit out of there and select your image, upload files, select files, click on fave icon, press open and press select and click on crop image. And now we can see we have that cool little A right in the top left corner. Click on publish and exit out of there. And you have that little icon right up there and it looks really cool and really polishes off your website. So that is how you create a website step-by-step -step with no step skipped. I hope you love your website and I hope you got a lot out of this video and just be amazed at what you built. It is truly amazing what you can do now. And we can look at our website and it looks really cool. We can go to the about page. Awesome. Our services page is beautiful. Click start and go to the contact page. And I think that we did a really, really good job. We could click on this bottom logo right here and it should take us back to our home page. And it just looks amazing. Now there is one more thing that we need to do and that is to log out so we can view it as the visitor. So just go over to the top right and hover over, then click log out and then visit your site just like a visitor would and you are done creating your website. So I hope you love this video. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. I'm Tyler Moore. Thank you so much.